Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to be simplifying trig expressions using trig identities. Okay, so before I start, I actually have prepared uh, the identities we're going to be needing um, in this, in my um, two-part video I'm going to make. Uh, it's the Pythagorean identities, okay? And the reason I actually have really, you know, starred and highlighted this one is because this one, this identity, it's the main identity, sine x squared plus cosine x squared equals 1 in the Pythagorean topic, you know, identities. And the reason is because all these other ones that I have written down are basically, they all come from this. This, these guys, well these two mainly, um, 1 minus cosine x squared equaling sine x squared, I got that from subtracting a cosine x squared. So I moved this really cosine x squared on this side, and I got 1 minus cosine x squared equals sine x squared. The same thing on this one, I just subtracted a sine. And um, here, the reason I got, um, how I got tan and cotangent is I divided each, each um, piece by sine. So cos over sine, 1 over sine, and I got this right here. And this one is I divided each piece by cosine. And I got sine over cosine, which is tangent, plus cos over cos is 1, 1 plus tangent, equaling 1 over cos, which is secant. Okay, that's all I did, and then I just did the same thing. I moved the 1 to get secant x squared minus 1 to get tan x squared, and I'm talking and talking, and I need to start my examples. I'm um, sorry. But, um, yeah, that's really all I did. I moved around. Just remember this one, and you will be able to get all these ones. I promise you. Um, yes, okay, so let's start. My example one will be cosine x squared multiplied by secant x squared minus 1. Okay, so not a long one, just a brief one, I think. So let me just tell you something. When I see something squared minus 1, um, or 1 minus something squared, I know I can simplify that. I know I can reduce it to something else. Okay, I know that I need to think of my identities um, and I will be able to uh, make it easier for myself. So how can I reduce secant x squared minus 1? Well, if you look at your identities, I have written it down right here secant x squared minus 1 is tangent x squared, so, or tan x squared. And how I got that was from this. Um, uh, the identity is 1 plus tangent x squared equaling secant x squared, but we have secant x squared minus 1. So you really move this 1 over here, you subtract a 1 from each side, and secant x squared minus 1 equals tan x squared. Okay, i just written it in some, uh, in, so it'll be more obvious here. So you know you can rewrite this as tangent x squared, and we still have the cos. So, well, what is tangent? Okay, we know what cos and sine, they're the, you know, the really primary, but what is tangent? Can we reduce that? Yes, we can. Uh, this is one of your reciprocal identities. I know I didn't write that down, I apologize, but um, I, I will write it when it's needed. So tangent is sine x squared over cosine x squared, okay? Just remember that. And we can substitute, since we have a cos, we can see, hmm, maybe we can cancel it out somehow. So let's rewrite tan as this ratio. Sine x squared over cosine x squared multiplied by cosine x squared. Well, since this is a fraction, let's put this, this is really over 1, right? So let's see. Well, look, we are multiplying, and we have the same numerator and the same denominator. We can cancel these guys out. They're the same. And you have sine x squared over 1, which is just sine x squared. And this is the final answer. It's correct. Okay, the next example will be pretty short. Um, let's do example 2. So I'm going to have sine, it's going to be really easy actually, because the next one's going to be a little bit longer. 
multiplied by cosine over 1 minus sine okay well look we got our 1 minus sine x squared we got 1 minus something squared okay that's how I think of it and I'm like oh okay think identities um, simplify all right so I'm gonna Bef I don't want to look at the identities. I want to show you that this is actually cosine x squared. Why? Well, I'll show you. And I have already mentioned it, so you might know what I'm going to do. But we know that sine x squared plus, cos plus cosine x squared equals 1, right? We want 1 minus sine x squared. So we want the sine x squared to be over on this side. In other words, we just have to subtract the sine x squared, right? Subtract from this side, you have to subtract from this side, okay? So this cancels and you get cosine to be 1 minus sine x squared. That's how we got that. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, so we can rewrite this thing as cosine x squared, right? So we still have sine x squared top of cosine divided by cosine x squared. And we got the same thing here, same thing here. Um, cancel each other, they cancel. And you're left with sine x squared. Okay? I know that was a super easy one, but now let's do a little bit. A little bit different. Find it, okay. Where is it? Oh, there you are. So, we got 1 minus cosine x. We got 1 plus secant x multiplied by cosine x. And this, once we simplify this down, the answer, I'm going to give you the answer. It's going to be also sine x squared. I know we're working with a lot of sine x squares, but just, I don't know, I guess coincidence. Um, okay, the reason I give you the answer, it's a little bit different, but you will mostly see this in your problems, or your teacher will give you this, where you have to ma make this side match the other side, okay? You, it's not that you have to um, divide this side and you have to divide this side too, no. You look at this, and you say, okay, so this side must answer must match this sign so this is where our task comes in what we have to do is work with this side or this side um, in order to make it sine x squared so we're gonna pick a side and we're gonna pick this side obviously because we can do a lot of things here so what I'm gonna do first is leave cosine x alone because it's just so independent and alone here we don't really need to mess around with it but these two we can do something we can just foil it out right multiply it out and see what we get so one times one it's just one one times secant x is just secant x um negative cosine x times one is just negative cosine x negative cosine x times secant x is just negative cosine secant x right just together and we're still multiplying by cosine x, it still has to equal to sine x squared, right? Okay, well let's see what we can do here. Well, I, I, I don't know what we can do here. Let's just leave that alone, but... But we are multiplying two things here. Let's see if we can simplify this. So, what is secant? Secant can be written as this. Secant uh, is the reciprocal of cosine. Okay, so we can rewrite secant as this. This comes from your reciprocal identity, okay? So secant is 1 over cosine x. Okay, and we're still multiplying. Okay, so what is this? Well, this is still over 1, right? It's really look at it like that. Same numerator, same denominator, cancel, and you have 1 over 1, which is just 1. So we're left with a 1, 
we still have a cosine secant and a one look at this we have a positive one and a negative one so you can do one subtract one and if you do so you will get zero right you'll just be left with secant x plus cosine one so you can just rewrite that as secant x plus cosine and we are still multiplying, sorry for the noise by the way, something came in. Uh, we're still multiplying this by cosine x, right? And it still has to, our goal for it is to equal sine x squared. Okay. Well, if I just distribute this quickly, I get cosine x secant x, right? And cosine times cosine is just cosine x squared. right so, so let's see this is a final step well now we are multiplying two things let's see what we can do we did this in a, a couple of steps away steps away but let's see so secant like i said is one over cosine so let's rewrite that so we're left with cosine x times one over cosine just rewrote secant plus cosine okay well this is still over one same as numerator denominator cancel each other out you're left with one over one or one hmm did i do that right it should be a minus yes no i did something wrong guys i think i did something wrong Hold on. Somehow I got a positive here. Do you see the mis mistake? What was it going like this? Oh, I think, yeah, yeah, right here. Sorry. This is supposed to be a negative. This is a negative, right? Because here it's a negative. Yeah, it's supposed to be a negative. I apologize about that. This is a negative. This is a negative. I need to prepare my videos. And this is a negative, okay? So like we said, we cancel the cosines. One over one is just one. Minus cosine x squared. And it has to equal, well, we're trying to make it equal to sine x squared. And this indeed, if you know your um, uh, identities, one minus cosine x squared is sine x squared. How? Well, let's see, let's look at our identities. 1 minus sine x squared equals cos... No. No, what was it? No, sorry. 1 minus cosine x squared equals sine x squared, right? That's what we have. 1 minus cosine sine x squared. And the, how I got that, like I said, is I just moved the cosine over here and I got sine x squared alone. 1 minus cosine x squared. Okay? So 1 minus... And since this side matches this side, we know our proof is valid, correct, and clear. Okay, I'll see you in my next video, my next, um, in the part two video. Thanks.